Hello and welcome to coverage of the post Magic Online Community Cup haze here. We've got a pre pre release for Cons of Tarkir. We've got Tom Ross down there, the boss. I'm the boss, Ross. I once uh, play tested with Tom Ross for a pro tour. What's he like? He's great. He's a fantastic human being. Uh, it was. He is Pro Tour Austin, and he ended up playing a mill deck. All right, and here's Erin Campbell. She's the host of the Deck Tease podcast, and it mm -hmm. looks like they are ready to go here. So why don't we jump down to the match? So we have. Yeah, wrong, wrong. All right. There are two of them going, so. Still the wrong one. All right. Well, which one is it? The other one. <laughs> that does not answer my question very well. <laughs> the other one is a. I know it's the other one. <laughs> All right, it looks like we got it up now, Rashad. And it looks like they're still in the early stages here. Jeskai Elder. For Aaron Campbell. That is one of my favorite cards. I think it's sweet. They don't like it. Uh, BDM says it's not good. It's a looter. What, what more could you want? That's kind of what I was thinking. I like how you think, Adam. Yeah, that. I like all sorts of cards that let you draw a card and then discard a card. Or discard a card in any order. I'll take the red ones, too. You'll, you'll rummage, you'll loot. And this one even lets you attack while you do it. Pretty nice. All right, so Tom. And it's going to get a debilitating injury. <laughs> he's, had, he's seen enough. No looting this game. Although Erin has just drawn her second Ice Feather Aven. Oh, How does she get is. so lucky? Yeah, uh, Ice Feather Aven is one of the, one of the strongest morphs. Uh, it's a front runner for my favorite. Yeah, here. so it is uh, reminiscent of Echo Tracer. It's... Uh, two, two, and this one has flying, uh, and you pay one uh, green, blue. Here, we'll go ahead. We can't do that. Yeah, to yeah, flip ahead. it up to uh, bounce uh, another creature. Yeah, I love can't, that card. Can't bounce itself, but. And yeah, you can't have it all, I suppose. Yeah. So, what do you like here? Play a soul type banner. Flip the, the Ice Dad, play another one. You have a, you have a lot of options. There's, there's a lot of decisions you can make here. Uh, I would I'd be OK with yeah, bouncing it, playing your second Ice Feather Aven face down. But uh, I decided to go with a straightforward play of uh, get some tempo and play my, get my beats in and clear your board. Which I think it was Sidisi's pet. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Sidisi's pet is just a one-four lifelink with more. So right. this is this goes along the lines like this is not gonna. This is not going to trade or eat your creature because it only has one power. But Tom is gonna go uh, face, face up, up, not with more this time. So just a four mana one-four lifelink. Yeah, she can actually starting to get a bit flooded, but she, she can, can play, play the, both of her spells. Yeah, play the banner and uh, <coughs> the ice, fe ice feather Aven face down. Yeah, and then if so, she gets to play both the banner and the Aven. Plus, next turn she can just cash in the banner for a fresh card if she hasn't drawn another spell. Yep. Yeah, the banners are great in a slower format like sealed deck where they help. Two two colors, you're going to play lots of powerful cards in three different colors. And you want to re you, don't, you want to have enough sources of every color, but you don't want to get flooded. Right. So while banners are a little bit inefficient, they do really help out in a, a world of uh, sealed deck. So CDC's pet hits the red zone. Two point life swing there. I see the cruise ship is, is docked there for uh, Tom Ross, though he's still a little ways off from being able to cast right. it. He's approaching it fairly quickly. And here's a bellowing saddle brute. 
Yep, here's our friend back again. It's just the, the four or five. Yeah, that card seems good. It's very strong. A four or five for four? Yep. Wow. And drew a throttle. Is, uh, That's, is that target creature gets minus four, minus four until next Yep, for uh, four B and it's an instant. Yeah, nice card. In the meantime, though, let's get rid of that guy. Send him right back to your hand and engage in battle. Okay. Yep, it looks like the plan here is to uh, crack that Sultai yeah, banner. Yeah, conveniently for enough. There's exactly three mana left to cash in the banner. The town has a bunch of options. Uh, a lot of his issues are that he can't do multiple Ooh. things in one turn that affect the board. But what he can do is play Sultai Ascendancy. Yeah, talk to me about this card. All the Ascendancies are very, very strong cards. So this one is both a card selection engine and a delve enabler. A lot of times the players, no matter what the two cards are, just put them in my bin. Yeah. I want to, you know, play the treasure cruise or the you know, any or, one or of the other. hooting mandrills yeah. or whatever, yeah. I like this. I like where this is going for Tom Ross. Now, what did Erin just draw, though? She has... A Right of the Serpent. And it's what does that do? 4BB Sorcery. Okay. Uh, destroy Target Creature. I like this. Uh, if you if it had a plus one, plus one counter, say uh, Outlasted, uh -huh. uh, you can you get a snake for your troubles, a 1-1 one, one snake. Okay, so just a small upside there, but basically mm -hmm. it's, it's, a, it's a big... Big sorcery speed removal spell. Yep. Now, Erin's decided, though, that she does not want to kill anything on the board as uh, she's got the advantage in the air anyway. She also and decided not to catch the and she, She's got Throttle and Sultai Banner available, so she can draw a card or kill something if she finds the need. This makes sense. I like it. Ross is... Chipping away at Aaron's life total, but not in a meaningful way. And it looks like Aaron's going to use the throttle on the CDC's pet here. Oh, not on the and CDC's the pet. Smoke teller. Now that's interesting. Just a 2 2. Let it live, right? Who cares? Depends on what kind of game uh, Aaron wants to play. I think she wants to play the game where she attacks with those Ice Feather Avens until her opponent dies. All right, All right, what, so is, what is, is Ross up to here? Is this Hooting Mandrills? Uh -huh. Oh, man, this is going to get out of hand. And once he gets all the way down on cards, he's going to be able to, uh, to Treasure Cruise to just reload again as well. Ooh, my favorite card, the Crippling Chill. Oh, I like that one. Yeah, it's a this is a reprint, right? Yeah, reprint from Avacyn or Storage. Yeah, I remember it. Yeah, two and a blue instant tap to our creature. It doesn't untap during its control. It's next untap step, and you get to draw a card. Mm -hmm. Gotta love that. Strong cards is great. So Aaron is continuing the beatdown plan here. She can take another hit from Sidisi's pet and still have the same clock. So she might want to lock down the mandrels here. What is this upkeep? Okay. We'll do it during the upkeep. Lock down the mandrels. So the rest of this turn is, is Aaron cracking that Sultai banner, right? Uh, Cash that thing potentially. in? Potentially. I mean, what else is it doing at this point? Yeah. Ooh. What did he draw? Acropolis Fiend. Is that the one that I saw at the Magic Party? That had, it was like a big, big card it's version? A, is it like a Delve Black Black 6 or something like that? Yeah, it, uh, 7. But it is a huge flyer, and it could start killing, uh, ooh, Thousand Winds. So this is your regular Maha Modi Jin with Morph. Oh, nice. A huge Morph trigger. W does it do something when it, when it turns face up? Yes, so when, uh, when Thousand Winds is turned face up, you return to all other tapped creatures. Oh, my goodness. Wow, that's a nice bomb rare. Wow, I really like that one. Yeah. Yeah, Tom not interested in bouncing the Avens back to her hand, so plays it face up, but runs it into the removal spell. No blocking for you. Right of the Serpent can still kill any creature. Unfortunately for Aaron, 
Tom's going to have There's more flyers where that one came from. Yeah, that one was bait, I think. Wow. Yeah. I'm, my my test spell is a Maha Modi Jin. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That test failed, but here it comes. Doing some delve action here. Yeah, you see the importance of filling your graveyard in Sultai. If you can't fill your graveyard, your deck is very clunky. Wow, you know that, that card is nasty. You know what that planes is for? Which planes? No. The planes in Aaron's hand? Uh-uh. Well, that, yeah. Aaron's oh, I do actually deck. know what it is. Yeah, I do. <laughs> it's for Soren's. Yeah. Sultai. Solemn Visitor, is yep. that what his name is? Yeah. I like that idea, but Aaron's in big trouble. That that banner needs to get cracked here. Yeah, she may not know that it has that second yeah. ability. Yeah, it's actually I'm scrolled think, off the bottom of the card. I'm, I'm thinking that that might be the case, too. I mean, remember, these are all brand new cards. Exactly. I right. mean, the newest possible cards. <laughs> these have been released for negative <laughs> one week. Yes, correct. So we'll have to be, we'll have to keep that in mind as we're sitting here with a player guide and comfortable chairs and Aaron's under the hot lights here and uh, easy to forget now. Wow, she's being yeah. really aggressive here. Going to attack just to get Tom down to three, but doesn't really have a plan to finish those last three or four damage. This is going to be really tough for Aaron. At the same time, she's going to lose those creatures anyway. Might as well get a couple of damage out of them. I didn't get any go cards. So Sadisi's pet going to be able to creep Pound's life total back up. I mean, Sadisi's pet is what kept Tom in this game. I, I wonder if Aaron could have chilled the pet instead of the mandrels and just traded a bunch of damage for or him even, not gaining three or even four. Or even way back when, uh, when uh, Aaron used her throttle. Just kill the life To kill the 2-2. Two -two. Yeah. She yeah, I, I, thought, I, I think the life linker was the, the target there, probably. Because the bear just doesn't do much. Ah, the fun never stops for Tom Ross. Now, what is this? Uh, Tigum Scheming. Oh, that's not going to do much here. Yet. Yet, correct. I don't know if she's got enough time here. 4, I, 8, 12. He's got lethal. She's going to have yeah. the chunk block. Can he kill well, the Ice Feather Aven on end step here? With the Necropolis Fiend. Yeah. So if that's the case, then it's game over. Yeah, so this Necropolis Fiend, uh, ooh. What just happened? Oh, we're looking at, uh, ooh, looking at? Oh, okay. This is, we, we switched to what, uh, Aaron's view of things, so we could see the five cards, five Totally awesome cards. And she could, in theory, pop her charm to, or pop her banner yeah. to draw that one. I'm taking that off the table. If she realizes it's not a Salte Obelisk, yeah. Right. So scheming lets you look at the top five. You can dump any number of them in the yard and any number of them back on top of your library, but you don't yep. get to draw any of them. Right. It's sort of index-ish, except for that you can get rid of stuff. Yeah, the, there's a huge difference between Index and Tigum mm -hmm. Scheming in that, one, you get to uh, keep, uh, you get to get rid of as many as you want. Index, you just had to draw them all eventually. Yeah. Uh, the other really important thing with Scheming is that you get to fill your graveyard up yeah, really it's quickly. It's, it's easily the most efficient way. To so the existence of Delve makes that actually a good card, even though you're sort of down a card when you cast it? Th yes. I, I think Scheming is a very solid card in Soul Tide X only. Like sure. That it, it's not worth it unless you have Delve. Usually, yeah. Usually we're not playing cards that cost you a card and don't replace themselves. Right. In most formats, this card is just very bad. But <laughs> in the world of cons of Tarkir, uh, and specifically with the Sultai clan, Delve is so important that you know you could cast your you could cast a turn three Necropolis Fiend, for example. <laughs> Just get rid of all five cards and you get a turn three four five flyer. It is. It's almost as good as Burke running.
All right, so players are taking a look at their sideboards here. Randy, this is normally when I'd ask you what else is going on, but we're doing it one match at a time, so. Uh, <laughs> probably. Rashad thinks there might be side drafts happening, but I don't know. No. So getting into the Community Cup means not only do you get this tournament, but there, you get to side draft too? Can I side draft? Oh, man. Is that a queue set up on this private environment? Can I get I mean, in the queue? I have a computer in front of me. Like, this is dangerous. <laughs> I will join Sorry, that sorry. Queue. Nothing to see here. Move along. <laughs> no, Marshall. Mus muscle no. reflex. <laughs> I had no choice. Yeah, I see. Is that you... bear in the queue? Matt, I think that bear is Matt Tabak. <laughs> Not that bear. <laughs> Are you talking about the panda? Or? The, the panda. <laughs> Is it true that Matt Tabak uh, posed for all of the bear art in Kongs of Tarkir? That is not true. Okay. <laughs> Only some. Our true. wonderful artists made their own renditions. But they weren't based off of Matt Tabak inspired artwork. All right, looks like we're ready to go. We have some keeps and some plays early in the game. Jungle Hollow. Wow, Aaron's got one of one of the uh, bombers of her own. What does she have? What uh, is she it? has Sagu Mauler. What does that do? I see is, the words trample and hexproof, which is what you smart. don't see is six six. Whoa! And it also has morph. Really? Yeah. What's so, its morph cost? Uh, three UG, so five mana. Wow! What a beating. Yeah. Like Simic Sky Swallower, but with a discount. Yeah. And upgraded yeah, exactly. from Shroud the Hex. Hexproof. No flying, though, right? No flying. Trample. But trample's good enough. At least they get a chance to, like, quadruple block, right? <laughs> I like that card. That is cool. She's not going to morph the Mauler this turn. She's going to go with her 0 5 Flying Defender morph. I like that. Run that one out in case he just peels it off again. Remember, he can. He had that uh, injury mm -hmm. card, whatever. It's, in fact, Absolutely. it looks like he has it this time, too. Huzzah! Oh, this is not what I thought it was. It was this, this is Bat. the other zero power blue morph. Yeah, so you can morph this by revealing a blue card from your hand, mm -hmm. which she does. And now she's going to get a great blocker here that's going to hold off that elk. I show you one of my cards, and you got to show me all of your cards. That's a trade we're, we're doing here. Okay. Yeah. Unfortunately for Anne, what she'll see is a very stacked hand. You'll see uh, the Ascendancy, again, with the ability to cast it on turn three. Wow. Yeah, the Ascendancies so are much so work. strong on turn three. Wow, that's nasty. Especially because he's under absolutely zero pressure currently. He just gets to set up, start yep. getting value, and off we go. He can use okay. it to find lands while filling up his graveyard here. Yep, and it looks like she's going to miss her fourth land drop here. Now she's got to be she's careful with her. Play morph. Yeah, she's got to play this. Like she knows that this could die. Right. But so I think she played the right one. I think so too. Uh, in that she saw a debilitating injury. Tom is going to think that Aaron just played. Oh, uh, Aaron may not know about the Sog Mall. It may have shown the other one. But you definitely don't want to lead with your bomb morph if you know your opponent has a removal spell. Right. So Tom doesn't have his fourth land yet, but he does have his Sultai Ascendancy to help him find it. This looks like a raid trigger here as this attack yep. probably isn't going anywhere. The difference between Bloodthirst and Raid, it's yes. very real. And Bloodthirst is often you have to be ahead to get, uh, whereas Raid is much, much, much easier to... Yeah, Randy said it, he called it trivial earlier. It's just, yeah. if you want Raid, you can get it. So now Tom's deciding between playing his... Uh, 
his more face down, his uh, abomination of Gadul. It's on this is one of the powerful three color morphs I was referring to earlier. All right, so Aaron successfully baited out that debilitating injury from Tom. Mm -hmm. And he's got double Highland game, but. Game. Yeah. Ooh. Hey, uh, Can't cast it yet, but that could come in handy. Soren Sol Solemn Visitor has arrived. Though for now, I think that she doesn't have any other play it's here but to play the yet. morph. Yeah, he's, he's in hand. He's ready to go. Right. One planes away. Keep in mind that Aaron is splashing for this Soren, so not a lot of white sources. In the and, the, and the opulent palace there, that's the, uh, that's the Soltai land, that's not the... Uh, yes, that is. Obzon land? Okay. Sandstep Citadel is the Obzon land. Okay. Tom Ross continues his battles, and he, Aaron has shown, no, I'm going to protect this morph. I'd rather take two damage here. And there he is. Wow, that card is good. Four, five <coughs> for four. And it's designed to be in a beatdown deck anyway. Mm -hmm. Man, that's good. I'd say it was uh, an awkward thing. He drew a fourth land, but her whole hand is five mana. Five mana, five mana, and a four mana white card. Yeah. Brutal. And not only that, but Aaron also has <laughs> five mana <Aaron> more. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is this is a little rough for Aaron, but she is one land away from I mean, having she's a not, pretty sweet one here. It's not like she's taking tons of beats here. No, she'll take four this turn. If she can draw land and say, she probably needs to draw land this turn. Because here comes some large creature of some variety, or two face down creatures. This is it. This is the beauty of morph. You can, might be a little bit more efficient to cast your creatures face up. Hey, hey, but there's you, a land. There you go. Wow, this changes things for sure now. Is this is going to be interesting if you're in Tom Ross's seat, right? Like, if Aaron just passes a turn, you have to be pretty scared of a lot of different things here, right? Absolutely. I think, it, yeah, Aaron just has her best card in play. Right. Uh, it's face down. Now, it cannot eat this morph. The, yeah, the Wooly locks it off. Yeah, which is a 6-7. That would be a disaster. That would be an absolute unmitigated disaster. But... In Thankfully, any event. Aaron has a pretty nice target on the battlefield already with the, the bellowing. Yeah, that's the one I would go after. Even then, I think the 6-7 might just pull Tom ahead. If he just unmorphs it. Yeah, yeah. it only costs 6 mana, right? Five and, a, 5 and a G. Yep. And in they go. Attack with all button has been pressed. What a great ability. Wow. Attack with this, all. Yeah, oh, I love that. Wow, this is a great card. So one thing Tom might do is uh, flip up his Abomination of Gadul. That costs five mana. And that leaves him with one mana, which is conveniently enough to cast Hootie and the Mandrill. So Tom Ross on a dedicated beatdown plan here, as Aaron is a bit of a victim of her mana curve with five, five, five drops, and even a five drop morph mm -hmm. on the battlefield, and then a, a splashed card that she can't currently play, and has really fallen behind on tempo as Tom Ross has been able to essentially just empty out his whole hand here, uh, leaving Aaron with four really solid spells, but they're all stranded in hand. Yep, so you'll see Tom do the play I suggested with yeah, I like that. flipping up his. Uh, this is the biggest looter you've ever seen. The this is. Three, four flying looter. <laughs> <laughs> and don't they have to discard too, or is it just looting? No, it's looting just looting. I, I meant your opponent. Yeah, it's no. just you. Okay. Just It's not an Abyssal Spectre as well. Love that. And that's the common. For yes, Sultai? this is the common more for Sultai. Okay, gotcha. If each 
Each plant has one more. In three colors. Right. I'm still figuring out uh, mm -hmm. which one's which. Because some of them have similar cards, but at different rarities and you know serving yeah. a different purpose. There are, yeah, there are lots of two-color morphs. You see the Saga Mala, the yeah. Ice Feather Avens. Yeah. Whenever I see a card that looks like this, I just think it's a rare. <laughs> like, <laughs> there's a lot of that stuff looks going. like a rare card yeah. too, right? Just the yeah. just the art. Yeah. It's, if it's, you cover up the like the text box. Yeah. And just look at art. No flavor text needed there. It's just got yeah. a lot going on. Tom's just dumping cards into his graveyard with his Siltai Ascendancy. Yeah, I think but he... The name of the game here is Engage in Battle. And Aaron does have a throttle. What is she going to target it? We've got to target flyer. that. She might die here. I think she My will. guess is that she's not going to block this morph. Yeah. And the morph plus any other creature, is, it's going to become a 6-7. And that should do it. You so morph this bad boy up. This is probably my pick if there's if there is a Nessie and S mm -hmm. uh, among the morphs. This is my pick for probably the strongest of the vanilla morphs. It is just so huge. Yeah, that thing tussles with everything, even Aaron's even this bomb rare, rare. Yeah. yeah, it's like yeah, Tom's common uh, beat up on Aaron's rare. Yeah. All right, so Tom Ross is our victor. He will move into the semifinals. He's going to be facing Bjorn Andreasen. Mm -hmm. That won't be for a little while, though. We still get to watch Sean Day9Plot play against Mariah Pagliacco. And uh, we're also going to see... Team 